Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to listen. Um, I would like to talk about using AI tools for generate images and questions using plugins that I have developed. The idea is uh, basically we have heard about ethics and theory and things about AI, and I would like to really use it and have easy tools for teachers for using it. So let's start. Um, I would like to give an introduction to talk about two subjects. One is image generation. This is the image that I generate using MidJourney based on my image, um, not real images. And question generation, a little speak about coding and UI problems in the development and then conclusions, what can be done. So let's start with the introduction. First of all, me. Uh, I came all the way from Israel, just all the Mediterranean Sea from side to side. Um, I am co-founder and CEO of Open Up Israel, that is a, is a software company that is doing open source LMS projects in universities, in colleges, companies, government agency, agencies in Israel. I am also a Linux enthusiast. I like using Linux. And I am also in my free time doing some Moodle plugins developer, and I'm trying to push them to the Moodle plugin database. Avi Levy that is sitting here is always helping me to push it well to the Moodle database. That's very important for plugin developers because in this way, a lot of users can use it. It's spread all the world. You can know how many people use it. So I encourage you not just to put stuff in GitHub, but try and work to push it into a Moodle database plugins. Um, and what is the goal? So first of all, I am for lazy teachers. So I am for using, uh, using tools, using AI tools for working less and having the computer and the tools for working for us. And in these cases, we will use uh, AI images, AI resources inside our course. Uh, we will do it through repositories. That is an easy way to do it directly for Moodle. And also, we will create and generate questions for quizzes, for, for having much more, quiz, much more question in quizzes. In this way, we can have random question. You can give every student different questions and have better questions and better quizzes. So let's start first on image generation. So basically, everyone can generate image using AI. Uh, sometimes it's free, sometimes you have to pay for it, but you can always use, like in this example, I just used DALI to generate a penguin uh, that is making an assignment. You can do it with your free tools, and you can just save the image, download it, and use it inside your course without any problem. You can use image generators that exist on the web, like DALI, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and more. Everything is uh, is, can be used. But that's the way, the complicated way. The teachers has to open an account in each of these uh, services, has to create the images, has to download them, to upload them. Very complicated for teachers, even for lazy teachers. Um, so I just gave some information how to use it, and I don't know if many of you uses MidJourney, that is very nice image generator, but it has a, you have to register at MidJourney, and then you have to go to Discord and write the syntax, and to have to pay, and that, that's not a, um, the idea is, and that's everyone can do without any problem. Um, it's a plugin that I developed called Text to Image Repository. It's a plugin that is already a lot, um, some months on Moodle database, Moodle plugin database. And the idea is you just, everywhere you have the file picker in your course, you can just use it, as you see here, you just write the definition of what you want. I would like to have some flying penguins, for example. So here you have it. You can define, I will show, you can define how many images you will get. And you just click on it, and you get it directly in your course. Um, it needs open, uh, open AI API registration and billing. I mean, you have to put some credit card or some uh, way of paying them. And as you know, the file picker exists almost everywhere in Moodle, in files, in uh, areas, in course image, in tiles, and everything. I will just show later some options. And 
for, for showing the options, let's see the plugin settings, because here you can see just the options. So a repository need a name, because you know on the, on the file picker, you have to have a name on the left side. And uh, you can choose here, it's an option that you can choose AI engine, it's not, it's not yet open, but it's in development for having the option to use more than open AI engines, there is more uh, engines. And you can define the image size. The image size, uh, much bigger, is nicer and high quality, but cost more, and maybe take more time to generate. So you can just play with it, and of course you have to give the key for API, op open a, Open, AP, uh, of an open, open AI, and you can also uh, choose how many images will be generated on each prompt. I mean, you give a prompt, and uh, it, it creates two images. Like the default is four, that is a nice number, and also the default of open AI, but if you like to have more or less for paying more or paying less or having more options, the options is open, and you can do it. And what is nice when you put plugins on Moodle uh, plugin database that you get statistics. You can know that 93 sites already use it and it's growing nicely. And I believe that after this uh, presentation, it will have a very high growing. And you can also know which versions of Moodle use it. The repository is, didn't really change between 3.x and 4.y. So it works on Moodle 3 version and 4 version. And you can see that it's widely used on a lot of uh, versions of Moodle. Of course, more on 4 than 3 that is uh, less and less used. But it's used on a lot of versions. And that's very uh, happy to see that people are using the plugins. And here are some usage examples. Um, as you can see on course images, you can just choose and generate the course images. Or if you use one of the course formats that use images, like tiles or uh, grid, then you can use it for generating the images. So that's some uh, simple examples that I made for, uh, for showing. Now let's talk about question generation. Question generation is very interesting. Basically, uh, I'm working on generating multi -cho multiple choice questions that are the most used uh, questions as far as I know. And is also for teachers that don't want to check their quizzes. It's very easy. The computer checks the quiz for itself and it makes nice quizzes. So let's have some words about ChatGPT. I hope everyone know, know it. I'm not going to read all the Wikipedia definition of ChatGPT. But basically, it's a conversation between, um, between the user and the computer. You just ask him to do stuff and it writes back what it does. And there is also other language model, but we will focus on ChatGPT that is used on OpenAI. And the idea is to ask ChatGPT to generate question, but in a parsable format. I mean, in format that Moodle can parse and create automatically questions inside the question bank of the course. So basically, you can use it. And here is an example how to use this logic. And I have to thank Ruti Salomon that helped me to get the idea of doing this, um, and you can just use uh, the web interface of ChatGPT and to ask him to generate it. Now there is already, uh, maybe there could be better prompt to generate better questions, but that's a prompt that I play with it and it works. Um, and the idea is ask ChatGPT to create questions in GIFT format. I don't know if you know GIFT format. GIFT format is one of the formats that Moodle uses for questions. It's a very simple and clean format, much, much uh, uh, shorter than XML or other ones, so it's very useful. And you can see here on the, on the right the, how it looks. The questions start with columns, then uh, brace the right brackets, then equal for the right answer, and tilde for the wrong answers. And I'm just asking ChatGPT, create me a question. I'm explaining him how is GIFT format, uh, what is the format of GIFT format. And I'm giving it here just an example of Barcelona from Wikipedia. I just took it for her, copy and, copy and paste from there. And it gave me questions. It doesn't work always on the first time. Sometimes it takes more than once to generate a possible and a clean GIFT um, 
gift output, and I will talk about it later because my plugin do it automatically and automatically check if the gift is accurate or not accurate and if it will work or not. But the idea is you can just do it without my plugin, without paying anything to Open OpenAI API. You just use the web interface of ChatGPT. You write the nice um, prompt, and if you have other ideas for better prompt, I will be happy to, to hear, and you get this answer. When you get this answer of the questions that it generates you, here I ask for getting four multiple choice questions, um, you can just use your favorite editor to save it in a file, and then you can just upload it into Moodle. You save it to a file, um, assuming it's a gift well formatted format a well formatted one and then you can just use the import questions from file you choose the gift one you drag and drop the file next 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 and you have questions in your question bank that's the free and easy way not easy way the free way <laughs> the nice way the interesting way is the AI text to question generator that's the plugin and the plugin simply do exactly the same but inside Moodle, you do not have to exit Moodle in any case. You just go from the course menu, so there's an option called AI questions. You choose it, then you get to this page. I will have another slide. Um, here, you have an option to use also resources from course, not implemented yet. It's planned for the new version. I mean, you don't even have to copy and paste your, your resources. It just read your resources from the course and generate question based on the resources that you have on the course. Not working yet, one time, one day it will work. And you can also define how many questions you want. Um, Technically, it's a local plugin, and once and you can just use it and call it from the course menu at the top of the course. And it looks like that. The, the, you type here on the left the text you want and the number of questions you want to generate, and then it start to work. Now, as I told you before, it's not always working on the first time. I mean, always, it's, it's always not working on the first time. Uh, but sometimes it do work on the first time, and it just go. So uh, I will I will explain that uh, what what was the problems that we had. But it's just trying and trying and trying, and till it gets the questions, and almost every t uh, and it works. It gets the question and it's it working. Now, what are the settings of this plugin? Here you can understand all the features. So first of all, you need an API key. As I told before, you have to pay and get a building agreement with OpenAI. And there is also an option here that uh, called OpenAI Endpoint. Interesting option if you have your private OpenAI uh, instance on Azure. Sometimes you have problem with privacy. You don't want your data spreading out. So you can have your private endpoint on Azure of OpenAI. Then you define here your private endpoint and you can use it. And there is the number of tries. If you don't want that OpenAI would try and retry and retry, every try costs money. You define here, I just found that 10 is nice, is almost every time working, but it could be that in other languages, other than English, um, you will need to have more tries. And you can here also choose the language. It, it, Basically, it could work in any language that Moodle supports. I think it's something like 170 uh, languages, something like that. But uh, I'm, I can't assure that uh, OpenAI will generate questions in every language. I can tell you I use it in, in English. It works very well. In French, not bad. In Hebrew, it works not really good. So there's not enough Hebrew in the language models. And also, probably in other uh, uh, languages that are not, uh, that have less information on the web, but you can choose and it will, it will write the prompt to OpenAI to, to generate questions in this language. If it will work or not, we will see. And again, on this uh, plugin, it's there for a few months and you can see it's in use. This plugin works only on a uh, model 4.x, 4.1, 1.2, 4.3, and hopefully uh, uh, other versions, future version. And uh, you can see it's in use. People are using it, and it's working uh, well and nicely. Now, some thoughts about the coding I would like to share with you. Um, 
during the development, we had a problem uh, that asking ChatGPT to generate could take time. You send a question to ChatGPT and you are waiting for an answer. So if it works on the first try, it's great. But most of the time, it's, it doesn't work on the first try. And then you wait and wait and wait. And it depends on your server, uh, server definition. It can get to timeouts. So we need something uh, technical for getting it to work well. Um, we create an ad hoc task. An ad hoc task is a task that is running on server side. Um, then when you just ask to create a question, there is a task that will run in a few seconds or uh, less um, on your server. And then the web page just check on the server, are my question ready or not? And that's why you have this round things and the bar. It just check every, I think if I remember well, every 20 seconds the state of the task, and it's telling you how many times it already asks ChatGPT to generate it. So you can see, okay, it's already asked four times, or three times, or seven times, and you can know how much tries were there for getting your questions. Um, some conclusion and thoughts about the plugins. Um, first of all, about ChatGPT. So here is this two plugins that I showed. Um, we use OpenAI AI tools uh, that have a good API and works well. Uh, we use the ChatGPT Turbo model, the ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo model. Um, it's a fast and cheap model, and that's very important because if you want to give it to all your teachers, you don't want to get a bill that you are not uh, aware of it. Um, we can use maybe later GPT-4, that should be much better even in other languages. I know that in Hebrew, GPT-4 is much, much better, but it could cost more time, more money, and it, maybe it could take also more time, so it's interesting to check, but I am really right now focused on, on using GPT-3.5 and maybe making it better. Um, as I showed you before, course, co course content inclusion is still in development. We would like the teachers to use it in an easy way, just copy the course content and directly send it to, uh, to the plugin. Um, we are thinking about letting the user to change the prompt, meaning um, I made a prompt, maybe you have a better one, maybe you can have a better one, and even if I can collect the statistics and get how, how many times it sends the request to OpenAI and get the question generated, maybe I can improve the prompt that is inside the plugin, so we can make the prompt inside the plugin settings and let the user generate and define his own prompt. Um, currently, you just ask for questions and you get the questions. Sometimes when you create real quiz, you would like to have questions in multiple levels, hard questions, easy questions, and things like that. So it's an option just to have also this ability to define which kind of question, which level of question you want, and then you can have better uh, question bank, and with this you can have better quizzes. Um, right now, when you ask to create a question, it just creates them in the question bank. You don't have the ability to check and to see and to uh, de decide if you want it to be on the question bank or not. You don't have to use it on quizzes. On your quizzes, you can choose what uh, question you want to use and what not. But it's directly uh, make everything in your question bank, and sometimes the question bank become dirty and, and big. So we are thinking about an option of um, Letting you see the question and choosing which question you want to add to the question bank and just add them after that. And as I said before, uh, we would like also to use other AI engines like Google Bard, Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is interesting because it's something that you can run on your own uh, GPUs, on your own hardware. So if you don't want to be uh, to be on to be on someone else and to have billing to someone else, it could be interesting. Even so, it could cost money. GPUs are not free. And finally, everything costs money. Um, that's it. I'm just sharing you also other uh, plugins that, uh, my plugins that are on Moodle uh, database. Um, this QR, just go to Moodle database, uh, my plugins. You can see all these plugins that I talk now and also other plugins. Um, I will be happy if everyone will use it, if everyone will share ideas, 
thoughts and everything for making it better and useful, whatever. That's it. Anyone have some questions? I think there would be. Hi, uh, really great plugin. And uh, I was just wondering if I understood correctly, you showed that you copy pasted the Wikipedia article for Barcelona to uh, generate the questions. Uh, is there a, a character limit? Yeah, there is a character limit. There is a, a limit of tokens on ChatGPT 3.5. If I remember well, it's about uh, 4,000 tokens. Now, tokens are not words. It depends on which language, but it's, it's based on, on, on ChatGPT uh, limits. So there is a limit of 4,000 tokens. So it will work in English for about 4,000 words, and in other languages, it will be less. Okay, words, not characters, so that's why it fits. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that, that's a great idea of generating content. <laughs> I don't remember what I asked. Uh, <laughs> can, can, can you, uh, did you consider, yeah, it's a random question. Um, did you consider um, creating the entire course out of a prompt? Or maybe just a module? A okay, so I, I didn't concentrate it yet. But it's a great idea to have the whole course created, the whole content created. Right now, I'm focused on the questions and the images. But uh, for the future, it's a great idea. I just, if you, yeah. If we'll have more time, maybe I'll do some demo and uh, just have the, no, demo of what I saw, what I, <laughs> what I showed. Yeah, not yet. Uh, thank you very much, uh, that was brilliant. Um, so I have a question about the question generation. Um, I was looking at your plugin last week, actually. It was looking very interesting. Uh, we have less of a problem on automating our questions uh, in so much as trying to automate or at least get good feedback into the question from our, our teams. So are you just generating the prompt uh, the, and the options, or is that including sort of hint text for multiple tries, that sort of thing? Currently, currently, and you just develop the basic of the multi-choice questions. It's the questions and four answers. One is correct and three are not correct. But it could be easy to have more data. I mean, we can define how many correct and how many non-correct. We can do uh, uh, true, false questions. And for the feedback, uh, we can also ask ChatGPT to, to give us a feedback. That's not too complicated. It just, I'm not sure, it's, it's, I have to check how it's going inside the gift format. But uh, assuming that it exists in the GIF format, so uh, we can just ask it and play with it. The problem when we complicate it, that there is less chance that it will work. So it's, it's a play with, between complexity and simplicity, and it's interesting to, to test, not tested yet. It does exist within GIF format, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. It's actually it's very useful for what we do. Um, we create courses for that are in the public domain. But my question is regards the image generator. Uh, currently, we we pay for a picture bank, and, and very often we don't really find the pictures actually we want. Um, so generating a picture is very useful. But my concern is uh, how can we be sure that it actually is not subject to, to copyrights. In other words, that the image is not. So we don't want to run into problems. Okay. That actually, the, in other words, that the image is actually generated and is not copied from somewhere else, yeah. and then might run into issues 
copyright? <laughs> So that's a good question, and it's a lower question, not a technical question. So it's hard for me to answer. And as far as I know, I don't know exactly what are the copyright of, of uh, OpenAI and uh, DALI image generations that I use in this plugin. So that's, that's a question. Uh, I don't want to answer that kind of question that I'm not aware. Now, I have another plugin that's called Pixabay Repository that use free, full free uh, images in the same way of repository. This way is proof to be full free. So it could be also an option, it has a very nice pictures. Just an idea, sorry if I'm here, on, um, uh, on providing open feedback. So for example, you can get the student to give like a written, written essay for example, and then judge it, it is not too bad in giving feedback on the style uh, and the content as well. So you could then yeah. feedback into Moodle, the, like some subjective feedback, but also score. You could also score them as well, so that can also come. So just, just an idea for uh, having an open-ended plugin beyond the multiple choice as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. I already play with it a little bit, and it's working very well with ChatGPT to uh, give a, a grade and even uh, details about the grade. It could be for the next projects. Yeah, Lydia, thanks for a great talk and really great work with the plugins. And re regarding uh, gift format and feedback, uh, we actually hacked on, hacked on uh, Yadidia's plugin on, in, on Monday in the Dev Jam, and we made a version of the prompt so that the out resulting questions have feedback for false and correct answers as well. So if, if, if you will accept yeah. our pull request, it will be a feature soon in the plugin. Yeah, that, so that's great to work with GitHub and pull requests. Um, everyone is, I like it, and everyone is, is really encouraged to use it. And I will be happy to have more features and to develop together. So that's the idea of open source, and it is working. So, so great. You can hear even, I mean, once the questions are created, you can edit them and add whatever you want. But it's a lot of work later. So, um, of course, everything that is created at the beginning is great. <laughs>